Hello, welcome to the third week of HSC's Python lessons. I am Jason Shim, and today we'll be going over strings and their associated data structures, including lists, tuples, and maps. So let's jump right into it. Now let's start with strings. A string in the context of programming is text, and it's just a variable that stores any text data. Now let's get into creating strings. As you can see, you can use either a quotes or double quotes for reasons which I'll go into later. Note that a string is always surrounded by quotes. So let's test this out. Let's open up um, Visual Studio Code. And once again, a refresher on how to create a new file. You click New File, or you do File, New File if you're on Mac. You Command S to save, or Control S, I guess. And let's say you want this to be strings lesson, I guess. Right? Wait. And, but I've made a mistake here, as it appears. So let's try that again. You need to end this with .py for it to be a Python file. Don't make the mistake I just made. But anyways, let's start with new string equals string. And if we print that, print new string, yes, it comes out as string. And we can put anything in this, and it'll still come out like Python, snake. Yes, everything works. Now, I mentioned in the beginning that you can also use single quotes. Yeah, that works. Honestly, yeah, sure. Everything works, both double and single quotes. Now you may be asking, why exactly we need these? And we'll get into that right now, actually. String errors. Now, as you can see, there are some cases in which it becomes disadvantageous to use one or either. For example, let's say aren't, can't, shouldn't, wouldn't is something we want to put it in a string for some reason. You can see that obviously this is invalid syntax. This won't work. And sure enough, if we try to run it, we get invalid syntax in aren't, can't, wouldn't, shouldn't. So what can we do to fix this? Well, there are three ways to fix this. I'll get into one right now and a few later. We can use double quotes since we don't actually use any of those. So that's all fine and dandy, but what if we did use a double quote? It doesn't work again. So this is, you know, this is where we get into the two other things I was talking about. The, th the first one is multi-line quotes. So let's say, and I believe this is the most easy one out of the other ones, because the first one is not flexible and the second one is also not flexible for reasons I'll get into later. So, once again, back to the task at hand. This does work. You can also do it with double quotes. And the thing about these multi-line quotes is that they do live up to their name. Let's say we wanted to put these on two lines, right? Well, with multi-line quotes, they actually do appear on two lines. Hence the name, multi-line quotes. So not only they, can they do this, but they can also help you recognize parentheses in your work. Now the second method I was going to go into was escapes. So as you can see, if we wanted to use both of those, so let's say we have the phrase, he said aren't can't, couldn't, pardon my spelling, shouldn't, wouldn't. Let's say you wanted to write that for some reason. Well, obviously you can't use single or double quotes. If you wanted to, you could use multi-line quotes, but this isn't what we're going into. Instead, you could use escapes. You could put these behind every single 
instance of the surrounding quotes. So if we were using single quotes, we would actually put this behind to every single single quote. So yes, this works. And to demonstrate single quotes, we can just put this behind every single quote. And yeah, once again, it works. And now, this one is less flexible for obvious reasons because you have to put this behind every single like instance of the surrounding quotes, which is tedious if you're going to, you know, use a longer string, which is why I suggest multi-line quotes more. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but let me comment all of this out. And by the way, commenting just negates everything on that line. It's useful for putting uh, comments, hence the name comments. But anyways, let's say you wanted to, you know, your name was Jeff. And you wanted to display your name to the entire world. So you wrote, my name is Jeff. Actually, let's ignore this for now. My name is Jeff, right? And if you were to print that, sure, that works. But what if your name was, say, Jafet, and you wanted to print that too? Well, instead of just doing it clunkily like this for, you know, an infinite number of names, this would get rather, like, long after a while. So what you could do, the one that's more efficient, is say, hey, we both have names, okay? Sorry if this is dragging on longer than it should, but let's say your name was Jeff, and Jeffet. Now instead of just doing this, you could say my name is, and then put percent mark s. Now this is a placeholder. It acts as a placeholder. So now what you could do is message. Um, the percent sign, and then you could put message, wait, name, wait, yeah, name. If we put name one, it would go to Jeff, likewise, sorry, likewise. Name two would print it as Jeffette, so let's try this. Yeah, we get the exact same message as before. Only now, if we wanted to, you know, stack a few of these. Three. Sorry, my typing is really off today, but 3, 4, and 5. All we'd have to do is put a few more of these. It works quite nicely. But I am not going to do that since we have limited time. So let me just comment these as is. Oh, and by the way, we can also use multiple of these, multiple string substitutions. So let's say there was a funny joke, as you can see on the hilarious slide. What did the number say to the number blank? Nice belt. And... You have this joke, right? And here, you can say 0 and 8 for each of these. And this should, should work, yes. So, not to dwell on this problem any longer, let's go on to the next thing we're looking about strings. Multiplying strings. And this is pretty straightforward. So let's say you wanted to have the string a, and you multiply that by 10. What do you think would happen? Now in mathematics, this would be 10a, duh. But in programming, this would multiply a 10 times, quite literally, actually, and put a 10 times. 
And this is sometimes used to line up strings with a specific number of spaces. So let's say you have a space, right, and you wanted 100 spaces. Well, here are our 100 spaces. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I will cover about strings. Now let's move on to the next thing that we're looking at. Lists. And you can see on the slide that a list is a group of strings in a single manipulatable object. And what this means is that it's a more flexible data structure involving strings. And that might sound confusing, but it's really not. Let's go into it. So let's give you an example of a list. Let's say you're really hungry, you want to buy a sandwich and make it. You would have a recipe for that. So we have bread, lettuce, tomato, and yes, that's it. This is a list. And if we print that, we get the list printed back at us. And monotype lists are called arrays, so this would actually be an array. We're not going to go into arrays too much, but generally they're more, they're more useful than lists themselves, disorganized lists to say. And the main thing to know about lists is that they, they rely on indices. Now, indices being the plural of index, and index is an important term to know here. So let's say that you wanted to print a specific item from this list, right? And let me do that. And let's say you wanted tomato. So normally you would put three, right? But computers, they don't count like that. So you would actually register tomato if you did recipe brackets too. Oh, and by the way, lists use brackets instead of parentheses. You may have noticed that. So you put two here, and you ask, why? Well, it's because the indices start at zero, so an item's index is its place in the list minus one. And this is, you know, really important to keep in mind, because this comes up a lot in, say, for loops, for instance. Now, something else we can do is to print everything in, the, in a specific domain. So let's say we want to everything from lettuce to tomato. Sorry, this is a rather short list, so I can't really do much. But let's say lettuce to tomato. You would get lettuce and tomato. Wait. Wait, yeah. So since it's everything from w one to two, it doesn't count tomato. It's inclusive. So that would actually just be lettuce. Apologies for that. And if you want, if you just wanted recipe two, and if you wanted to say that, if you wanted to say that, uh, if you want to re replace tomato, sorry, lost my bearings there for a second. If you want to replace tomato with cheese, you would do it like this. And this doesn't actually do anything, but let's print this. If we were to print recipe two after changing that, we would get cheese. And yeah. Now, we've just looked at some properties of lists, but we haven't actually looked at some commands. So let's get into that. Um, let me repost this, actually. It's getting a bit cluttered. So, let's say that you wanted to add patty to the list. Well, it would be done by recipe.append patty. And, you know, for extra measure, you wanted cheese. Recipe.append cheese. And sure enough, if we do print it, we get all of this, which is nice. Now, if you wanted to do the opposite of that, if you wanted to, you know, delete what we have added, we can actually do del recipe, and this, this would be uh, item, th 
with the index of 3. Recall that it would be the fourth item, and 4 minus 1 is 3. And this would be 4 by the same logic. And yes, let's try running that. We should get... Um, wait, oh, it's out of range, so... Yeah. Now one other thing that we can do is list arithmetic. Let me find the space for this. Let's say we have list 1, which is composed of 1, 2, 3, and we have list 2, which is composed of, let's start with, let's go with a different type. So we have 1, 2, and 3, right? And so let's say we want to, you know, add them together. Well, we can do this by just simply adding them together. That's where list arithmetic comes from. Sorry, this was meant to be list 1. But, yes, it comes out like this. So recall that it doesn't actually have to have the same data type. If you want the same data type, that would be an array, but this isn't an array, it's a list. Sorry. And we can also multiply them, which might sound a bit weird, but you don't you can't multiply it by itself. It's a similar deal. You can't multiply it by another list is what I meant to say, sorry. It's a similar deal to if we scroll up to this. It repeats the list a few times. And yeah. That's pretty much all there is to the list, or all there is to the basics of the list, perhaps. It's more flexible than a string because you can call, you know, specific strings from the list, and that works. Now, let's very briefly go into tuples. A tuple is a list that cannot be altered, so let's just say we have a tuple, sorry, called constant, and we actually are going to use parentheses here and not square brackets. So constant, let's name a few, the north star, as constant as the north star, as they used to say. Three, three is a constant, and phi, the golden ratio. And let's say you wanted to print that. It, you know, it works as a regular list. There's nothing surprising about this. The deal with the tuple is that you can't change the data in it. Like, you can't append or delete. Here, let me try to delete from it. Let's say del constant 2. And you'll see that it doesn't work. Tuple object doesn't support item deletion. And so this means that if you see a tuple in a code, it's a hint that the data shouldn't be changed. It shouldn't be tampered with. And so these are useful for having constants. Now, I mentioned that we would do it briefly, and briefly it is. There's not much to say about these because they're just, yeah, they're just that. And finally, we get to maps. Maps. And no, you don't use these for tracking or anything. A map is a collection in which each item has a key and a value. So think of it as, say, an, a list or an array, where every value has a corresponding value that you can use to track it. That might sound a bit confusing, and it is at first. Let's start off with a map of poets. And, you know, linking poem, poems to they're poets. It's so the Raven written by Poe. Um doing some indentation here, indentation work. We have the tiger. No, that is not a typo. That's by William Blake. And by the way, we should separate these with commas. Uh, sorry, indentation went a bit weird. Uh, fire and ice. 
by Frost, Robert Frost, and The Odyssey by Homer. And so here we have a map. We can see that each um, key, for in, in this case the key would be the raven, is matched up with a value. The raven and its value is Po. And each pair is separated with a comma. You can see this on the slide. Now, let's say we were to, you know, print something. Well, in that case, you would actually have to use the key. So let's say print poets of the poets. The raven, right? And, oh, sorry. We actually have to use square brackets when we're referring to these. we get Po with the key. And if we want to, you know, delete it as well, Del Poets the Raven. And if we print that, we can see that Po is missing. So the thing to take away here is that commands involving maps use the key. Once again, you can see this on our slides. And if we wanted to do some replacing, let's use a different example this time. Let's say we wanted to replace the author of the Odyssey. We would have poets, square brackets, Odyssey. And let's say that we want to instead include the name of the king who commissioned these into writing, Pasistratus. This is a multidisciplinary class, it seems. But if we did this, and if we printed from poets, we can see that the author of the Odyssey is now Pasistratus. A bit unjust in my opinion, but eh. Now, the one thing you can't do is to try to add maps together, because it doesn't work. So let's split this into two, shall we? Poets, poets two, poets one. And let's just try to add these together, even though we know how that's going to go. Poets one plus poets two. Oh, uh, sorry. Unsupported operand type. Yep, you can't add maps together. So in summary, going back to the slides, we talked about strings. Um, we talked about strings. We talked about errors. We talked about substitution. We talked about arithmetic. Returning back to the code. See, this is why I like to use uh, comments, because they let you see this stuff. So... We went through errors, we went through substitution, we went through more substitution, and multiplying, arithmetic. Next on these slides, we see lists, we see indices, commands, and arithmetic. So, we see this, we learn about indices, some commands, and arithmetic. And finally, we learn about tuples and maps. Tuples here, and maps fresh in our memory. I shall comment this too. Comment every line. Unfortunately, Python doesn't support multiple comments, but that's fine. And yes, that is everything we have done today. Sorry if this video was a bit long, but yeah. So if you need help, you can email me at my email shown. Or else, well, have a nice day. See ya, and I hope this helped.